Hi everyone, you are watching Chemistry with Kat. In today's episode, we are going to cover that very scary word, electronegativity. I'm gonna show you the trends that tell us how electronegativity increases and decreases, and you'll see that it's not that scary. Let's do it. Electronegativity is defined as the ability of an atom to draw electrons to itself in a bond. More specifically and more accurately, it's actually an atom's ability to attract electron density in a covalent bond. Now, what is a covalent bond? Pretty much, atoms have many ways that they can bond to each other. Ionic is the simplest. They either hand over their electrons or take electrons from another atom. Covalent is when they're not strong enough to completely take an electron away or necessarily give one up. So instead, the atoms share the electrons. In a covalent bond, the atoms could be sharing the electrons equally, and then it would be a nonpolar bond. But more often than not, the electrons are not being shared equally. One of the atoms is drawing the electrons closer to it because it has a higher electronegativity, a higher ability to draw that electron density to itself in the covalent bond. This concept was first discovered by the American scientist Linus Pauling in 1932. If you look him up or you look up Pauling electronegativity, Google will show you a periodic table that looks like the one behind me, but instead of atomic mass, it will show you the electronegativity of each atom. These are numbers that we just have to look up. In all of my schooling, I never had to memorize these numbers, but I did have to memorize the trends and know off the top of my head what atoms are more electronegative than others. So that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do right now. The main thing to remember is that the smaller the atom is, the more electronegative it's going to be. This is kind of easy to understand because if we think of atomic structure, we know that the nucleus has all the positive charge. The protons and neutrons sit in the nucleus, neutrons have no charge, and protons have the positive charge. So I like to think of the nucleus as a giant positive magnet. Then the electrons are orbiting outside. It's almost like those electrons create a negative force field around the atom. A smaller atom has less electrons and less of that negative charge shielding the nucleus. So that positive nucleus is very strong. That positive magnet is strong and able to attract electrons towards it. So the first trend that's the easiest to know is that if you go down the periodic table, electronegativity will decrease. This makes sense. Obviously up top we have smaller atoms and down here we have huge atoms. Imagine having four or five or six orbitals of electrons that are shielding that positive nucleus. Of course those atoms aren't going to be able to attract more electrons as well as a small atom that has that positive nucleus attracting the electrons. The concept that's weird is that when you travel from left to right on the periodic table, the atoms are actually getting smaller. This is weird, I know, because atomic number is increasing. If we look at row two, we go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How is neon with an atomic number of ten actually smaller than lithium with an atomic number of three? It all comes down to that positive nucleus. Remember, always think of that nucleus as a very strong positive magnet. Neon has ten protons in it, which means that it is a very strong positive magnet. Lithium only has three protons. So neon with those 10 protons and that very positive nucleus is going to attract its own electrons to it and thus be tighter. Lithium is actually bigger because the nucleus can't pull in those electrons as well because it's not as strong. That's why lithium, it's so easy for that one electron to go away. If we know that atomic size is decreasing when we move across the periodic table, then that means that the electronegativity is increasing if we go across the table. So, easy to remember, electronegativity is increasing when we go to the right and we go up. 
So that actually makes fluorine the most electronegative atom. You might be asking, why isn't it neon or helium? Helium is higher than fluorine and they're more to the right, but those are noble gases. They already have a full octet. They're not trying to get any electrons. I always think of the noble gases as like those bachelors, like they never want to meet anybody. They never want to be in a relationship. They just are good and complete on their own. We all aspire to be a noble gas. To test these trends, I have some true or false questions. First, true or false. Fluorine has a larger electronegativity than lithium. This one's kind of easy because we already know that fluorine is the most electronegative atom, but let's test it just to be sure. Fluorine is number nine, lithium is number three. They're both in the same row, so that doesn't change anything. But lithium is on the left, and fluorine is on the right. So we know that fluorine is a smaller atom, which means it's more electronegative. Next, true or false, iodine has a larger electronegativity than oxygen. Let's find them on the periodic table. Iodine is way down here and oxygen is up here. Now, technically iodine is more to the right, but it's so low that it's actually less electronegative. So this one is false. True or false? Oxygen has a smaller electronegativity than carbon. We have oxygen over here and carbon over here. They're both in the second row, so we know that that's not a factor. But oxygen is more to the right. So oxygen is actually the smaller atom and more electronegative. So that one's false as well. Electronegativity is very important when we start to talk about bonding and trying to predict how atoms are going to share their electrons. So make sure you know this really well. I'm going to put a practice problem on my Instagram with the solution, so be sure to check that out at ChemWithCat. If you liked this video, please comment, like, subscribe to my channel. I have lots more to come and I am so grateful to have you all on board.